So, there's a saying that I try and live by. It's not anything special, it's not anything too meaningful, and it comes from Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. Never trust how you feel about your life past 9pm. What this means is simply, don't trust the thoughts you have past a certain point in the night, because, at least for me, and I can imagine many others, late nights are when thoughts can get overwhelming. They can drown out anything good and replace it with all negative, harmful noise. And the only thoughts that do come through are those little thoughts that are a little too dark and depressing to bring up in a YouTube video by someone very unqualified to talk about them. But if you don't trust those thoughts, you can wake up the next morning and feel a little better as your mind has cleared and those negative thoughts are mostly gone, at least for the moment. Now, obviously, this thought process won't work for everybody, and it's also not meant to put those who can escape those thoughts down. It's just something that personally works for me, and I can take a wild guess and say it might work for many others. Now, some nights, the late night thoughts are a little worse than others, and some nights, there are nowhere to be found. But no matter when these thoughts dissipate, whether in the morning or a late night, there is an amount of clarity that comes from the emptiness left by these thoughts. With said clarity, we can get a view into how we are as a person, how we've progressed and grown, and we can compare these thoughts back to a prior day when we've had similar thoughts. It can be in many different ways, a new skill acquired, a new friend made, a new trophy, or a better mental than times prior. My mental health is something important to me, one, because as a topic I find mental health as a whole very interesting, but two, my mental health isn't great consistently. I will say, however, that these past three weeks have been a blast with writing and editing the Amori video, and now recording, writing, and editing this video, and my mental health has definitely improved just by having something to do. However, that doesn't mean that I'm always happy with myself, or that I'm always happy in general. And it's definitely been this way for some time now, since probably I could say the end of middle school is when a lot of my mental issues started, and I still struggle with them to this day, a freshman in college. But what I can say that's positive about this is that I definitely have grown and I've definitely improved. That's not to say I'm perfect now and I'm far from it, but what I can say is I'm getting there. It may take my whole life, it may take me a few years, hell, I could wake up tomorrow and be perfect. I doubt it. But, Raccoon, you might think, how do you th know you've improved? How do you know you aren't just making it up in your stupid little mind prison, your little mind prison that you live in, your mind prison? What is wrong with me? To answer that, I must direct you to the, this video's topic, Celeste. Celeste is an early 2018 platform game developed and released by Extremely OK Games. It follows a mental health mountain climb, accompanied by a very real mountain climb, where you jump, climb, and dash your way through puzzle-like rooms. The game's been talked about a lot, uh, with topics ranging from the mechanics that make this game so well-designed, to its exp amazing expansion level, to its incredible music. That's all been talked about. What I haven't seen talked about too much, and this might be a very personal thing to me, but it is very important to me as well, is progression, and progressing both through the game and through life itself. What do I mean by this? Well, playing a game will make you better at that game. Revolutionary concept, I know. But sometimes that progress isn't super tangible or visible. I don't have too much of an example of this, but I can kind of compare it to mental health. Wow, a mental health comparison, a mental health video, focus on a game about mental health. Wow. Shut up, shut up, I know. Anyways, sometimes with your own mental, it can definitely stagnate. And even if to others and the world around you, you are improving, you might be so stuck in your own mind that you are blind to said progression and tend to dismiss your own progress. Celeste doesn't really let this happen with your progress as a gamer, as a massive giga chad gamer. As often you get stuck on a room for so long that you remember how you felt torturing yourself playing that room, and then coming back a while later and beating it on your first try. It's a very visible improvement and it's a lot, it's very rewarding I'd describe it as. Now you might be thinking, hey loser, what that gotta do with my depression? Ow, that hurt to do. Ow. Shut up. <laughs> now, how this connects to your mental state is that, at least for me, and I can imagine other people, but maybe not everybody, can also remember the feelings they had at the time of beating a hard level in this game. When I first played Celeste all those years ago, and by that I mean like three years ago, it's not that long, I wasn't in the best mental state. I won't get into it. It's not the point of the video, but it wasn't good. I then, about nine months later, replayed the game on a new save file. Now, at the time of this replay, I was in a better mental state. Doesn't mean I was good, but I was better. And playing the game again, getting through these levels that I used to have memorized, I could remember my feelings during my original playthrough outside of the game. 
and I could definitely see a difference from then versus now. I could see the improvement, not just in my skill as a player, but also my mental. It was weird to see the improvement in such a tangible way for me, and it made me feel really good about things. Fast forward about two years after the second playthrough, here I am in college, now, before working on making the Amori video, my mental was quickly deteriorating. Honestly, to the worst it's ever been, mainly because I didn't have much to do and my mind was left to wander on its own. I will say that working on that video and this one have actually helped me a ton, as it gives me a very real and tangible and fun goal to work towards, and it's been a lot of fun. And when brainstorming ideas for other videos, I always knew I wanted to talk about Celeste, and that paired with my very recently improved mental, this video felt very right to make. So, in this video, I'll be replaying Celeste with the goal of beating my past records and taking time to compare both my skill and mental to me two years ago. Now, like in my last video, this video will spoil Celeste in every way. I intend to talk about it, give a sort of recap, more of a silly one than anything, but it does spoil things about the game, and it's a very beautiful game that I'm not doing justice here, and I think you should definitely go and play. Now, I'm going to list out my goals as they follow. Number one, beat every level, A, B, and C sides, along with Farewell, in a shorter time than my previous save files. Number two, collect every strawberry, and this includes the moonberry, this does not include the golden strawberries. And number three, die as little as possible. Now, for some comparison, and I'll compare them at the end of the video as well, my previous save files are as follows. My first playthrough, I beat everything within 37 hours, with close to about 10,000 deaths. My second playthrough was about 24 hours, and around 4,000 deaths. Alright, this is an editor's note if the audio sounds bad since I didn't take time to set it up. I didn't realize until looking at the save files and making sure everything was set in place for editing this video that I did it in 2,000 deaths. I'm actually pretty impressed with myself whatever this one was done. Uh, but no, it's not 4,000, it's 2,000. Sorry about the misconception. About 10 hours shorter than the last save file and about 5,000 less deaths. That's what I had to beat and I was more than ready. This is it. Just breathe. No need to be nervous. Let's do this. And we begin, making our way to the start of our journey, talking to some weird old lady who seems to know a little more than she lets on. Bridge collapses under us, and we gain the ability to dash. Oh, that's right, I read somewhere on, um, what's it called? Conservapedia. Apparently being trans gives you the ability to do a double dash, according to conservatives. So, obviously I trust everything they say. Entering a forgotten city, we dash our way, collecting the strawberries of this level, along with finding two very important things for this playthrough a crystal heart, and a cassette tape. Now, for sake of doing this stuff quick, it is important that we get these on our first go, as to not have to play back levels as often. We will be getting these in every level, due to needing the crystal hearts to even play certain levels later on, and needing cassettes to access the B-sides, which are harder versions of the base game levels that we unlock later on. We also run into a man on a journey named Theo. We chat with him, and are off to finish scaling the Forgotten City. After making camp near a gravestone, we awake to a weird calling to explore some ruins up ahead. In the depths of them we find a mirror and surprise, bitch! Us but Erpel has decided to escapee the mirror. We go after her, collecting straws on the way, and upon meeting up with her, she explains that she's a part of us, and that we should turn back, as according to her, we can't climb this mountain. Now officially she is called a part of you, but for namesake, she will now be called Battleline because I like that name better. We deny her request for us to stop, so she attacks us, setting us into a cosmic Mario-esque chase sequence. After a bit of running, we escape and get a phone call on a public telephone. Weird, since that can't happen and oh, we're dreaming. Waking up, we walk through the real ruins, with the deep part we found earlier being long buried with rubble. We talk to Theo again and get to the phone. We call our mom for comfort and the chapter ends. After that, we arrive at a rundown hotel and are greeted by its ghostly manager, Mr. Ashiro, who wants us to stay in his nice hotel. Well, I learned in second grade that stranger danger, nuh uh, so no, we will not be going along with him. We might make him feel better. Going through the hotel, we help Oshiro clean up the massive mess, and after a long journey, we come to the glorious presidential suite, which Oshiro believes to be the key to getting us to stay. Before we can put our foot down, however, Battleline shows up and does it for us in a very mean way. She calls him a loser. And, obviously, because she called him a loser, therefore he will now kill us. After escaping that escapade, we come across a very scary area to climb. High peaks, even higher winds, and a grandma! This is going to take all of our non-existent mountain climbing skills, and also magic bubbles. The magic bubbles really do help! And look at that, we made it to the very end! Theo meets up with us, and we take a 
Definitely not safe. Please do not use this. Oh god, this thing might explode. I don't even know how a gondola could explode, but this one will gondola. And the definitely not safe. Please do not use this. Oh god, this thing might explode. I don't even know how a gondola could explode, but this one will stalls. Because I could have never guessed that, that would have happened on the I should shorten that. So from now on, I will be calling this thing the Dunspinetto to make that Nice ring to it. I know I'm a genius. But gun no stalls, and we begin to have a panic attack. Theo helps us through it, giving us a breathing technique to help out using a feather. It works, and the Dunspit is not good to mid Kai skip the bateau. Gondola starts working again, which takes us to the entrance of some sort of super ancient ruin. And when I say super, I mean ultra mega ancient. Mega ancient. Theo runs in like a kid in a candy store, and we chase after him. Getting deep into the temple, we learn that the mountain's power is strong here, and creatures begin to attack us. Made up from our own state of mind, we find Theo trapped in a crystal and learn that the temple is also shaping itself to him as well. We sort of break him out, he's still stuck in the crystal, but now we have a weapon, and we can throw it and use it to kill things, like the giant eye. After making camp outside the temple, Theo wakes up and we hold conversation with him, getting some really fun dialogue and also a very cute photo. We go to bed, and what seems like another dream sequence, we confront Battleline, telling her we don't need her. She doesn't like this, and while sending us all the way down the mountain, gives us what is probably one of my favorite lines to come out of this game, which is, you're not above me. At the bottom of the mountain, we try to make our way back to the surface just to survive, using Kevin's Kevin to climb out of this hole in the mountain. We meet with Granny, who tells us to confront Battleline about why she's so scared and try to understand her. We do, and one Later, we become one again, now giving us the power that transphobes believe to be the devil, a double dash. Granny and Theo and Madeline convince Battleline to try climbing the mountain one last time just for the sake of it, and we do. Climbing all the way back up is a bit of a challenge, but with a whole new power up, newfound determination, and a banger soundtrack. Just listen to this. We make it all the way to the top. And that's the game you fought, loser! Yeah, we're not even halfway done this game. Next up, about a year later, we return to the mountain to explore the core, a lava and ice theme level. Getting through this is a challenge, especially since our own powers are nerfed, but this won't stop us, and as we clear the core, we begin to get to the harder parts of this game. Now we begin the B-sides, harder variants of the main eight chapters. Each one is a little shorter than the A-sides, but still long and pretty hard. No strawberries to collect though, just a level to beat, and beat them I did, getting all eight done fairly quickly. This unlocks Celeste's final base game challenge, the Seasides and Golden Strawberries. For those who don't know the Golden Strawberries, what they are is a duet level Deathless. I am not getting these for this video because they are torture. I will be doing the Seasides however, which are harder versions of the B-sides. They normally are very short, only including three rooms, but are very challenging. Honestly, the seaside went pretty quickly, with the only real struggle being this fucking level. I swear to you, I am bad at timing and I know this. This gives me an aneurysm every time I play it. <sighs> I was able to do the Summit Seaside, which a lot of people consider the hardest challenge in the base game, in only 20 tries. So I'm actually very happy about that. Almost makes me forget about you! You, 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 you smelly, spiny pancake? 
So now with the seaside's done, that's it, right? That's the game. Nope. Farewell was a free expansion of Celeste with one new chapter and a new story. One chapter seems pretty short until you learn that this thing is about the length of four chapters in one and probably the hardest challenge this game has to offer. It's also space and ocean theme, which are two of my favorite themes, so it's definitely worth all the masochism that comes from playing this. The story follows Madeline dealing with Granny's death by chasing a bird through a dream sequence. Madeline refusing to help us, saying it's not worth it. We see as Madeline progresses, her mental state and her dream world begin to deteriorate. Until so we reconcile with Madeline, we're at the climax of our dream breaking. We complete the hardest challenge this game has to offer to help the bird. If you want a more detailed explanation, I will link a video in the description that has a super good in-depth look on Farewell, and I recommend watching it. It's a phenomenal deep dive. I'm going to play this challenge in full for you so you can watch me do it, and you'll either be super impressed or you will or you speedrun this game, or even play it modded, in which case this looks like baby goo goo gaga baby stinky goo goo baby sticky shit. And that's Celeste. The game is done. We did it. Now to fulfill the purpose of me making this video, let's compare my skill about two to three years ago to now. Turning over to a very unscripted raccoon who will probably fuck this up. I hope I don't. Hello, hello, is this thing on? Is this thing on? I hope this sounds good. Uh, I will not fuck it up, hopefully. So, we're gonna go look at my review of the Celeste stuff. I have been playing modded Celeste recently, that is why the menu looks weird. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know, whatever. Hopefully. What? What? Why can I zoom? What? <laughs> okay. I'm getting distracted. Climb. So. In my original playthrough, 9,300 9, deaths, 37 hours. Uh, we got done farewell, right? That's pretty good. Second playthrough. 2,000... Oh, two th I lied in the script. I said, dude, there's only 2,000 deaths. So really, really got to be careful here. 24 hours. Now, I will say, I did go back and play some of the Golden Strawberry Challenges and the Moonberry. So my save file here is not accurate. 
um i will i did screenshot my original save file before i did that stuff so i will show that here but even with that stuff done 11 hours not even 2,000 deaths which is insane now if i go and look at screenshot which i'll pull up i future me should edit into the video i would hope to god it took me nine hours the base game of celeste is only eight hours long i was one hour over the base game getting everything done that's insane to me that's wild like I, like that's i remember playing and thinking oh man i'm not gonna be very fucking good this is gonna suck no i did fucking amazing and then i also proceeded to go if you can see here i proceeded to go in and do some extra golden strawberries which i'm pretty happy with i'll take it i'll take it all right, I don't have anything else to say. I hope future me doesn't regret me existing. Now, for the main reason I'm making this video, mental health of my own. Just as much as I can see improvement in my skills, making rooms that took me hours before look like butter that I can slather all over a chair and throw at a wall? Did I write that? What's, what's wrong with me? Whatever. As I was saying, I made things look easy, but I can also very clearly after playing this see my own mental improvement. Socially, for example, and how I interact with people. Three years ago, I only had one friend I was that close with, although we had also been friends long before that, and I probably will be friends with him for long past this video. And I wasn't sure my relationship with so many other people, not due to them at all, just my own weird mental issues. Sure, I had friends, but at least from my perspective, I felt so distant, which is a fault of my own. I have a hard time reaching out to people, and I struggle with that. It felt hard to interact with these friends. Even though I wanted to be around them, it was just so draining. Fast forward to now, I'm still close with that one friend, because I expected that. But I have two other really close friends that I talk to consistently as well, along with a lot of people I'm still really good friends with. If any of you are seeing this, I promise I will visit when I come home from college. I just haven't come home yet. Along with that, taking with both old friends and even new people has become much easier. I'm not perfect with it, my social battery still does drain very quickly, but I'm better. Honestly, before playing this game again, I was in a bit of despair at the thought that I hadn't improved at all these past three years. I thought I'd record this footage and then make the script and realize, man, this video is fucking pointless because I didn't improve. But I did, and that's really cool to see. Celeste has allowed me to take time and reflect and see the improvements I've made, and it feels really good. Along with that, it's really fun just to play this game again. And it's also really fun because I'm not playing this game just to distract myself from things. I'm making a whole last video essay on it. Which, as cringe as this might sound, YouTube videos or video essays or content like this in general has been my dream to do ever since I started watching Jacksepticeye's videos back when I was like 8. And with that, we've gone through my growth and how this game can help me see that. But I'm curious, and I hope this makes sense and you can answer my question here. To those watching, does if you've played Celeste, does it allow you to reflect in a similar way, or does this entire video not make sense to you? Do you have other games that do what Celeste does for you that do to me? I mean, everyone has games they hold close in their hearts, and I wonder if, for reasons like mine, or for many others, you have games that you hold close to your hearts for a same reason. Maybe the game has gotten you at a rough point in life, maybe it connected you with your friends that you would have never met otherwise. We associate feelings with games as well, for example, we associate rage with Overwatch 2. I can promise you this because I have to play it for my esports team. I hate it, but whatever. For me, I associate Celeste with growth, and while I know it's not really a feeling, it's what I think can fit this game best, at least in my definition. Again, let me know your thoughts on your own games and stuff that means a lot to you in that sense. Probably in the comments, since YouTube doesn't have a DM section. Damn, could you imagine if they did? I'd be getting like porn ads from accounts pretending to be like Linus Tech Tips. What the hell was that one about again? Oh, yeah, games. Just let me know. I, I, I think games mean a lot to a lot of people, and Celeste means a lot to me for the growth I can see. This game's like a checkpoint for me. And I know that this isn't the last time I'm going to do a playthrough. I know I'll be coming back multiple times throughout the rest of my life. Because it's a really good checkpoint for me. And I also just enjoy the game outright. Now, reading back the script and getting ready to record it all, I realized I didn't write any more segments past the Linus Tech Tip joke. Um, but that's the end of the video. I want to thank you all for watching. It was a really fun time to make this. And I'm already getting to work on my next video to release. 
it's probably going to be something on roguelikes, as I have a lot to say about those, so stick around if you find that interesting. If you would be fine with liking, commenting, or subscribing, as every shitty-ass person on the internet asks you to do, that'd be great. If you don't, that's fine, too. I got not much else. Thank you all for watching. It's been a great time. I'll see you all around.